A very warm welcome to Daily Dispatch powered by HSBC. I'm Priya Sheen and joining me today is Mark Khan from Omnimode. Thank you very much, Mark, for joining us today. I want to begin by talking to you about the fund and, and the environment when it comes to fundraising. You know, over the last couple of uh, months amid the pandemic, we've been seeing so many new startups come into the fray. I want to understand from your perspective, what's been the kind of uh, frenzy in the fund market? Look, I... Well, I, I think a lot of people got stuck at home for two years and had decided to quit their jobs and start companies. Um, I mean, look, this is part of a larger trend of entrepreneurship that has been going on for really over a decade. Um, I think, you know, it, over the last, you know, especially in the last five years, right, more and more young people, um, people in the middle of their careers have decided to take the path of entrepreneurship, seeing the, you know, potential to transform sectors, industries, parts of our society, and, and the threshold, right, the, the barriers to entry have, have come down to a great extent, um, as the funding ecosystem has been built out at all stages, at the at the angel and pre-seed stage, at the seed stage, at the classic Series A and beyond, and so I think as a result, you've got you know thousands, tens of thousands um, of of hungry entrepreneurs that you know want to change the world, and uh, that you get a frenzy from that, right? Um, I, I think what we see are the quality of entrepreneurs getting better year after year after year. Um, and so people in my industry, in venture capital, um, we exist to, to fund those people. And as we see stronger and stronger businesses being built, better ideas, um, it, it, I guess, results in a frenzy. Tell us a little bit about the fundraising environment. You know, when you look at the entire scenario and how it's shaping up, we're seeing a lot of new funds coming out. You know, there are a lot of new fundraisers happening, new rounds of funding. Uh, has it become easier to raise funds at this point in time? I think for startups, I mean, it's certainly easier to raise than it was five years ago or 10 years ago. I think in 2022, it's probably harder to raise than in 2021. Oh, I think we've actually had right, the last few weeks have been a bit of a cool off, um, kind of like every VC has a hangover from the party the prior year. Um, but, uh, but I think in general, uh, it has gotten easier. I think for funds, it's a bit different. Um, because we raise from more institutional sources of capital or family offices or high net worth individuals. Um, I think that at least domestically in India has gotten a bit easier. Um, as people become more aware of alternative assets and and more you know and and more desirous of having at least some part of their overall portfolio um, giving them exposure to them, so uh, so yeah, I think at least for the last few years it got easier. We'll have to see how twenty twenty two plays out. Sure, uh, you know, Mark, uh, tell us a little bit about the sectors that are looking good to you right now. Look, we largely invest across uh, six themes, um, farmer platforms and fintech, uh, marketplaces, agri B2B marketplaces, uh, farm to consumer brands, um, some deep tech themes as well, like precision agriculture, post harvest technologies and agri food life sciences. I think the last few years have been all about marketplaces, platforms and fintech, right? Basically building an organizational, an informational, a financing layer over the rural economy, over the you know 130 million smallholder farmers and and all of the millions of intermediaries. That's still that's that's a story that's still in its early days. Um, but I think as we look towards our investments, we're doing more in in deep tech. We're doing more in life sciences, and I think we'll actually do a bit more in consumer uh, than than we used to in in these farm to consumer brands that are being built. Um, not to say we won't do, you know, the, the marketplaces and the platforms, but we've taken a lot of existing bets there. Absolutely. Uh, Mark, tell us a little bit about the exit environment and how that's looking for you at this point in time. We will have a major exit announced uh, in April, um, our biggest so far. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and, and another uh, probably about a few months after that. Um, and these are kind of full exits. Um, but, but 
you know, generally speaking, the exit environment is looking uh, reasonably good. So we're, we're happy about that. And the final question before I let you go in terms of the pipeline, what can we expect going forward? Is there a number in terms of how many investments you're looking at uh, in the year ahead? What's the plan out there? I would say in general, Omnivore makes about, uh, we're very boring, right? We make about five or six mm -hmm. investments every year. 2021 was more active, but it was more active for everyone. I would anticipate five or six investments, you know? Um, hopefully a lot of really interesting stories in terms of big follow-ons. And, um, you know, we, we will, uh, I believe that 2022 will see the first unicorns being birthed in the, uh, the agri-tech sector. So stay tuned there. All right, Mark. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Priya. Been a pleasure. Thank mm -hmm. you.